Howdy ho, de Marinos. What? What? What did you say? Gabo and I were just talking, literally just got done game hunting. We were like, let's just film something really quick and something we thought about because Brixton wasn't here, my son, talking. Gabo was like, what, would you, what are you gonna do with your collection when you die? And we thought that'd be a fun video to talk about. So today, let's talk about what we're gonna do when the Grim Reaper comes for us. Okay, Rifo. Yes, sir. If you die tomorrow, <gasps> Well, let's put next week. What okay. are you gonna do or what you would like to do with your collection? So I think any collector, if you really think about it, I think the, the obvious answer, if you have kids or family, you think to yourself, your first reaction is to pass it down to your kids. But in reality, we have to remember that if you've watched like Pawn Stars and things like that, a lot of these things get that get passed down to kids might seem like a good thing for us, which it may for me as well. But I almost feel like you have to make sure that your kids are gonna have even some sort of attachment to it. Because if not, I mean, when you pass it, of course they can do what they want with it. But this is stuff that we're passionate about. And it's like, you want to make sure if you're giving it to them that they actually will hold on to this stuff or take care of it or love it in a specific way. Yeah, for us it can be, you know, the best or most precious treasures. Yeah. But for them, who knows? Probably that collection is going to spend a lot of years in a basement. Yeah. And then, I don't know, in a eBay. Yeah. Goodwill. Obviously, another option is just to sell it. If you don't say you're gonna die, you sell it and give your kids the money or something like that. But you take the risk when you when you give it to your kids, you, you know you're like taking that risk, you're going on the journey of saying, okay, when I pass, they're probably not gonna hold on to these treasures. And for me personally, <laughs> my kids, as much as I wanna think they would hold on to it, I don't think they would hold on to it. I think this I think the same. So what are you gonna do? You have two weeks right now, Dr. Well, Gabo. You, you have uh, <laughs> gocolomitis and you're gonna die. You're gonna die. I don't well, know what that is, by the way. I already told you guys and I already told my wife. What I gonna do? Yeah. Okay, I gonna see, I got two daughters. One, one of my daughter has 20. She doesn't have any interest in video games. Got it. And the baby, baby Emma. So what I gonna do or what I would like to do is first leave something the most pressure to me to my daughters. Got it. Like he has to, he can be a game or a toy or something, and the rest pass it to my friends. So I gonna, I gonna give uh, yeah. another example. Everything Xbox that is in my walls, my other signs, uh, my controllers goes to Rifo. Now I gotta kill you. Yeah, and the Nintendo stuff. I need to think. Who? Probably Ricky. Ah, uh, but Ricky is not that lower of the Switch. Probably my Nintendo stuff, the, the other figures I have. Your time's coming, bro. Something I was thinking about as you were saying that to kind of steal what you were saying, because again, this was not planned in any way, shape, or form. Obviously, kids would be number one option. Since we are YouTube people, yeah. it would be really cool, say, obviously, if we know we have two weeks coming, to hold some sort of thing where it's like, we're gonna pass 80% of this on to the people who have given us the most joy during this journey, yeah. which would be the audience. Exactly. That'd be really cool if we were like, hey, we got two weeks. I mean, there's so much stuff that it's almost like we could give away 80% and be able to literally give away one thing to each subscriber or person that engages or cares. That would be really cool. I think that would be like a awesome. send off. Yeah, I need to write down in my, how do you call that? In your, in your will? In my will. You're gonna write down the audience yeah. in your will? Yes, huh. because remember, I don't sell. I give. Yeah, that's a, actually that's a great idea. But but I mean, I would like to in the in the case of you guys, I would like for you guys to have something from me that always remind you know. Got it. Re remind you about me, like oh yeah. that stupid guy or whatever. Now say you know we all have different opinions in the world on religion and afterlife and all that, and that's cool. Say that you. Mm -hmm. Again, this isn't saying anything about any religion, anything. Say you know that you're going to be able to see people when you die, right? You can watch them, yeah. right? The spirits and... Say you can yeah. experience that. You watch the people. Yeah. Would you be sad 
Do you feel like you would be sad if you gave stuff to your daughters, your friends, and I wouldn't say they fell on hard times, but just, you know, wanted to make some bucks. And I use Pawn Stars as an example oh, because- Oh, bro probably ain't coming back to hunt them. Wow. As a ghost. Did you say haunt them or hunt them? Because those are hunt two different them. things. Well, I don't know, uh, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Whenever yeah. I'm watching Pawn Stars, I always feel a little bit weird, and you can tell Rick and Chum do too, when they're like, oh, where'd you get this? And they're like, yeah, it was my grandpa's, it was really, and his grandpa's, and his yeah. grandpa's, his grandpa's, and they're like, and I just wanted to go gamble in Vegas this weekend. Yeah, that sucks. To be honest, it, it makes me kind of mad. But again, everybody's different. Yeah. Who knows if they really need the money. Well, hard times is a different thing. Yes. That's, that's, that's a completely but, different ball. But to me personally, that's kind of, uh, I don't know, that's, yeah. that's not good. In my humble opinion. Got it. But if it was, say it was something that I really loved, right? Something that's really precious to me, an old school game that I had, that I had when I was a kid. Say it became a worth a bunch of money and say my son went through hard times, lost his job and you know was gonna, needed to pay his mortgage. Well, well, I don't think I would be sad in that case knowing that he had well, to Well, me too. Today. In that case, I stay in paradise and I don't go down and hunt him. And kill him. No, I don't kill. I hunt, I don't kill. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was stupid, right? You're always stupid. Now, speaking towards some other people that I know collect and would have ideas about this, what about the idea of possibly giving some of your stuff up for like, you know, some of your more heavy hitter stuff to like museums or something like that oh, where yeah. it's more preserving the history. Like, yeah. hey, I know I'm gonna go, my kids don't care, the audience didn't care, or maybe they definitely. do. Definitely, yeah, definitely I would do that. I would love to do that, yeah. Donate it to history? Yes. So that for the rest of time, people can see yeah. your stuff. If what I got is unique, that right now I don't think I have something unique. Only me, I'm unique. You're pretty unique. Yeah, you too. Oh. Whoa! Kind of tying into that, but a little bit different. What stuff is the more high price stuff to you, the stuff that's the most valuable in your collection, or is it the stuff that was more like the journey of the collection? Say for me, it can be anything. I mean, it can literally be this, because Gabo gave this to me after a hunt, game hunting, it was like part of the show. Is it worth a million dollars? No. But is this the kind of stuff that is more priceless to you, or is it stuff that is literally priced at a higher price tag? Uh, for me, in my humble opinion, it depends on the, how you get it. For me, the most bad. Yeah, the, we can say, uh, for example, I, I remember the first score that I have with you guys. Nice. Things. The first time, do you remember that? Was it a Walking Dead something? At yes. Fries? It was, it was in Fries wow. and it was the Rick, Rick wow. Walking Dead. And I was thinking, actually I'm planning get out of my pops. You're, be done with pop collecting. Yeah. But that that one, I'm gonna keep that one. It's because he has a, yeah. yeah. And not only that, he's other, I don't know, every every present, the, the cool people in the community show have given to me yeah. in the conventions or send it to me, I'm keeping that. I'm with you too. I, For me, especially as someone who obviously has a passion for documenting this, you know, I've been documenting yeah. this for almost a decade now on other channels and stuff as well. For me, especially like this room, because this room, I pretty much didn't bring in any of my old stuff, no old games, no old toys, nothing. This was like an empty slate almost to where I was like, everything I collect on the show, on the journey with Mikey, with Gabo, more NES Complex, everybody, Ricky, I'm gonna, that's what's gonna go in the room. So for me, even like, when I look around this room, is it a bunch of rare stuff? No, but it's like, I remember it's who valuable. gave me that. Yeah. I remember how I got that. I remember where yeah. I bought those. It's like, for me, that's the most valuable stuff yeah. and probably why I enjoy this room yeah. kind of the most I, I, my It's rooms. like, I think like one uh, last year, I post a picture on Instagram because I found the first ever present they sent to me. A fan of the show? Yeah, nice. it was Pastor Seth. Pastor Seth, he's been yeah. around for a long time. Yeah, and I remember I, I found the bag with the message, beautiful message, thanks yeah. again, appreciate it. I'm keeping that, man, he's... Yeah. It's special stuff. Yeah, dude, it's that's, that's, that's special. Yeah. Like you. So we had to say an answer, it sounds like, to wrap up, basically it'd be like a mixture of like, trying to give our kids stuff that would actually make sense for them. That's mm -hmm. kind of, I feel like, both of our final answer. Selling it off doesn't really sound like something either of us are interested in doing because there's too much memories, too much nostalgia. I mean, I, it's different for like selling, like get our PlayStation 4 stuff or Xbox One stuff. That's Just a different five. ball game. That's a different ball game. That stuff I'd be willing <laughs> This room genuinely stinks. 
Thanks for oh, don't blow it in my way. <laughs> don't blow it my way. What's wrong Just with you? Cut off. Rifa, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Serious question. Serious question. When or you have plans of this end? No. Your YouTube career. YouTube. When, when, your YouTube career. Career. Yeah. When do you think or you have planned or you sit down when you go to the to the bathroom you sit down in the toilet you know you begin thinking about mm -hmm. it yeah do you think when this is gonna end i honestly don't think i'll ever stop and the reason i say that is not because i'm like youtube i'm talking about the youtube that's what I'm career all right okay so put it this way video game collecting is something that i'll always be doing toy collecting right mm -hmm. no matter what but you're talking about youtube career or you career, oh, that's a funny word in our world. But for me personally, yes, the video games are always gonna be here because I love them, but one of my other big passions has always been production, creativity. Even when I'm not doing necessarily YouTube stuff, I'm in here, I'm on my computer doing other things that are creative, like creating things, making pictures, making art, photoshopping things. That's just kind of my thing. So that's why I feel like YouTube will be here forever because that's always a way for me to, to, com to combine two of my favorite loves which is like video games and nostalgia and like creating things so That's put those into one and kind of do that okay so we're gonna have reefer for a long time when i'm 90. so it's funny because the other day uh last week i was talking with a good friend mm -hmm. and he just began watching our videos Ooh. and he was amazed by your editing because he 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 likes editing and he wants to begin uh, doing that Got it. and begin a channel. Oh, well, thank you. So he's, he's using you as an example. Oh, what's going on? Just standing back a little bit, stretch. I'm starting. Oh, okay. The Alpo Loco is starting to kick in a little bit. I don't know. I lost it. And you can cut. Thank you to everybody that watches. Thank you to your, to your friend that uses me as a, some sort of example. That's already a bad mistake in life, let me tell you that. But thank no, you No, come on, dude. Don't, don't try to be humble. Well, you, need, you always need to be humble, but I already say it, man. I think you're the GOAT on editing. Uh, there's a lot of good people thank you. doing editing. I will take it, thank you. In my humble opinion, you're the GOAT. Now, Thank give, you. now give me my money. I do appreciate it. In the end, yeah. let us know what you guys would plan on doing with your collection. Say you knew you had whatever it is, a month, a year, whatever. You want to make all the monies on all of it? You want to pass it down? You want to give it to a community <laughs> if you're a YouTuber or you got friends or whatever it is? Do you want to die? <laughs> do you want to die? <laughs> do you want to die? I'm sorry. I, I just, I'm, I'm being stupid. Actually, with that shirt like that, you look like Skip. Skip? Yeah, from Napoleon Dynamite. That's a huge compliment. All right, we're out of here. Oh boy, open that door. It's starting to smell. <laughs> oh.